Here we go, the glorious light of gold now. Look at this, but wow. Hello, and welcome to another evening dog walk. <laughs> Good evening. It's kind of weird. It's uh, two days after midsummer, two days after the solstice, or litter if you prefer. There's hardly any bird song already. I mean, I know they shut down at this time of year and the birds go quiet for about a month, but um, still kind of weird. This time of night, it's about quarter to nine in the evening at the moment, you'd normally expect to hear loads of them. I can hear, what's that? I think it's a chiff chaff in the distance, but that's about it. Oh, and a few wood pigeons. But yeah, got this to look forward to for a month now, hardly any birds on. As I explained in the previous video, it's perfectly normal. You know, birds have got to take some time out at some time to molt their feathers and get their new feathers. And it just so happens that now's the best time to do it because the chicks have fledged and uh, hopefully they've had plenty to eat because there's a lot of stuff around and they can actually take it easy for about a month. But once they've got their new feathers, they'll be as busy as ever and all the bird song will come back. Look at all the lovely bramble flowers. That'll keep the bees and the butterflies and the moths and the flies happy. If there's enough of them around to enjoy it all, it's, uh, as I said in the last video, it's quite distressing how few I've seen this year. And I've not heard a single grasshopper yet, which is, um, I know it's slightly early, but I still expect to have heard some by now, now that all the meadows are up. The older flower is going over now. You can see the various stages here, look. There's a reasonably still fresh. And here they've started to go. And here they've gone completely. And as you can see, the older berries are starting to form. I'll be looking at hedgerow jam in a month or so. And talking about jam, I was having a conversation with someone earlier. Not quite an argument, but you know, borderline argument conversation about the pronunciation of the word scone. Or scone, if you prefer. Now, my attitude is live and let live. I think it's probably a, a social thing. It's probably a class thing. I think it's a north-south divide thing. But for me, it's quite definitely pronounced scone because that's the way I grew up and that's what we call it. What annoyed me is that the person I was having this discussion with then said to me, no, you're wrong. It's pronounced scone. At that point, the old Colgan dando was raised, I'm afraid. So I went away and I put together this little presentation and I sent it to them and I said to them, what do you call this object? Is it a stone? No, it's not, is it? It's a stone. And all the things that have stone attached to it, like headstone and curbstone and tombstone, they're all own words, aren't they? Yes, they are. Ah, oh, well, they said, but, but, but. And I said, OK, what's this thing? That's a bone, isn't it? Like a hip bone, a chin bone. And what's this thing? It's a cone, isn't it? This is not a con, because a con's a very different thing. It's a cone. And that's a phone. And think of all the words that run off the back of phone, like vibraphone and euphonium. It's all phone words, isn't it? There's no phon. And these things are very popular at the moment. This is a drone. It's not a dron. It's a drone. And that's the tone knob. It's not the ton knob. And who's that? Is that the Lone Ranger? No, it's not. It's the Lone Ranger because O-N-E is most commonly pronounced as own. Now, when they argued, ah, but there must be lots of different words that are pronounced the other way, I said, really, are there? Because I can see lots here, alone, zone, home, clone. All of those all end with own, and that's just a sample of all the different words that end with own. And that's not counting all the ones, of course, that you can put own on the end of. As I said, like curbstone or like telephone. How many have you got? And guess what? We had a look and we found gone and we found shone, which are both past tense words. And we can't count ones like one, done and none because they're pronounced with a U sound, aren't they? They're not on, don and non. They're one, done and none. So words like every one or no one or underdone, they're all unwords. They're not onwards like scone. The only ones you've got are gone and shone. If you can find any more, show me. And guess what? They couldn't. At this point, they backed down a little bit and said, well, fair enough, maybe there are different ways of pronouncing it. And I said, well, that's the whole point. 
You know, the English language is an amalgam of lots of different languages that have all come together, and a lot of words have different word roots from other languages, so the spellings are going to change. Plus there's the fact that, you know, the vast majority of the British public were illiterate for thousands of years, so they spelt things as they sounded. And, you know, and there's a difference between the way that someone in Wales will say tooth to the way I'll say tooth. So you can't sit there and tell me that I'm saying scone wrong. If we were doing it by weight of a referendum, it would be quite clearly the fact that I'm right. But the point is this. I don't care how you pronounce it. And you shouldn't care how I pronounce it. Everyone's different. Thankfully, we didn't get onto the subject of what goes on first, the jam or the cream, because that would have really been a difficult argument. Because I'm a Cornishman, so obviously I've got quite fixed views on that. Another day, another dog walk. Not a lot to report wildlife wise, but it's uh, it's really pleasant out here. I think now I will um, go home for a scone and jam. Or maybe I'll get myself a piece of chicken and eat it all off the bun. See you next time. Bye bye.